A common sight in most modern gyms is fitness enthusiasts who are really only enthusiastic about enlarging all the muscles they can see in the mirror. They may perform endless repetitions of bench, curls, and crunches, but neglect the central supporting core of the entire upper body, the spine. We tend to forget about the spine until it reminds us with pain or dysfunction. Neck and back pain are all too common and can be devastating to one's quality of life. But with a little care and proper training, the spine can stay healthy and keep one feeling strong, standing tall, and feeling more present in life. In this video, we're going to go over the bridge exercises, a group of exercises which when done safely and properly, develop a healthy spine and strong posterior chain, making you feel sturdy, stable, and more capable in your daily life. The bridge patterns bring with them many benefits, but here are a few of the highlights. First, bridges open up the anterior chain muscles, which are so commonly tight, and it does this from head to toe. Second, when the anterior muscles become longer and looser, it becomes easier to open up the rib cage and abdomen and breathe properly. Third, bridges strengthen the entire posterior chain of muscles, which are the creators of real strength in athletics and daily life. Fourth, as the posterior chain strengthens, it actively pulls the body into a taller, more confident posture. Fifth, bridge positions raise the abdomen above the heart and the heart above the head. This increases venous return from the abdominal organs to the heart, flushing out old and stagnant blood while taking pressure off the heart and allowing it to relax, improving overall health and often decreasing anxiety. And six, the heart being above the head allows more freshly oxygenated blood to flow to the brain, often increasing focus and helping to clear the mind. And the best part about bridges is that they are simple body weight exercises with no equipment needed. They can be done anywhere and at any time. The first variation of the bridge position is the shoulder bridge. This bridge is one that I would recommend starting with as its risk of injury is very low, yet it still provides many benefits and teaches the leg, hip, and spine mechanics needed for more advanced bridge variations. To perform the shoulder bridge, simply lay on your back with feet flat on the ground, knees bent, and arms at your side. The wider the feet are, the easier the bridge becomes. Now you're going to lift your hips into the air until your back is straight while keeping the feet and shoulders on the ground. If you stop here, you've done a glute bridge, a great exercise for the glutes, but we're still going a step further. From here, you'll need to activate the hamstrings and the paraspinal muscles of the back, with the goal being to evenly activate the muscles of the posterior chain. This will be healthier for the spine while also greatly increasing the strength that can be created. To do this, begin pulling your feet against the ground towards your butt without actually moving the feet. Arch the back as well and try to feel an even bow of tension from heel to shoulders. This is a static shoulder bridge and I recommend holding this for 15 to 30 seconds at a time in the beginning. This can also be turned into a great dynamic exercise or warm up by performing it as repetitions while reaching over the head with one hand and rotating the hips, torso, and shoulder to maximize the reach. This is a great way to work the glutes and lateral flexors of the spine while also increasing thoracic rotation. This is known as the shoulder bridge reach in calisthenics but more commonly known as the jiu-jitsu bridge or upa to martial artists and is used in grappling to escape the mount by pushing the opponent off of you. Some of the goals of this bridge variation are different than those of the shoulder bridge. It still strengthens the posterior chain as with all bridges, but in this version the spine is kept in a straight, neutral position as opposed to an arch. And the body is propped up on the arms, bringing the shoulders, elbows, and wrists into the mix. This bridge is important for teaching control over the low back curve. In arch bridge variations, the low back can often be overarched, potentially causing damage to spinal discs and resulting in significant back pain. There are two ways to avoid this. Evenly distribute the tension along the posterior chain, as practiced in the shoulder bridge, or increase activation of the abdominals, which helps to flatten out the lower back curve and can be taught in the tabletop bridge. To perform the tabletop, sit on the ground with your knees bent, your feet flat, and your hands on the ground. Hands can be pointed towards the back or towards the front, but I recommend hands out to the side as it's usually the easiest on the shoulders and wrists. From this position, straighten your back and stabilize your shoulders by pulling your shoulder blades down and back causing your chest to stick up and out. Then press your hips up using the glute muscles. Maintain a straight spine the entire time and stop the movement once the spine and legs are both horizontal. Hold this position for 15 to 30 seconds to start with. In the tabletop position, your shoulders will be an extreme extension 
and for many people, lack of shoulder mobility will be the limiting factor in this exercise. However, you can gain the necessary shoulder mobility by turning this into a dynamic exercise for repetitions. With each repetition only going as far as your shoulders will allow. With consistency, you will gain mobility rapidly and quickly reach the top position. The third variation we're going to talk about is the Iconic Back Bridge. This position has been used in martial arts, gymnastics, calisthenics, and yoga, all of which seek it out for its many potential benefits and as a test for one's ability to integrate and mobilize the entire body into one unified movement. The back bridge is similar to the shoulder bridge, except now the hands go over the head to act as a base of support along with the feet. This creates a high demand on the shoulders for strength, stability, and plenty of flexibility. Though you can make the bridge easier on the shoulders and the hips by widening the feet and hands, especially in the beginning. To perform the back bridge, lay on your back as if you are going to do a shoulder bridge. Then reach your hands overhead and place them flat on the ground with the fingers pointed towards the feet. From here you will begin to push the hips up off the ground first, followed by a push through the hands to lift the upper body up off the ground. Done properly, this will activate the hamstrings, glutes, spinal muscles, shoulders, and triceps. At the top of the movement, you should feel an even bow of tension going from heels to palms. And again, be careful not to put too much of the bend just into the lower back. Attempt to hold this for 15 to 30 seconds before carefully lowering yourself back down. This can be a difficult movement for a number of reasons and should be attempted mindfully. The most common limitations are wrist flexibility, shoulder mobility, abdominal tension, and tight hip flexors. Each of these components can be worked on individually to help improve the back bridge. And I would also recommend that each of these areas be warmed up and lightly stretched before you attempt this exercise. A great way to turn this into a dynamic exercise is to perform this with a reach, similar to the Jiu Jitsu reach. In fact, the back bridge reach gives you most of the benefits of the back bridge with fewer demands on wrist and shoulder flexibility. It pulls together the lessons learned from all previous variations into one concise movement. I add it into every upper body warm up to prepare my shoulders and spine for the upcoming exertion. To perform the bridge reach, Put yourself in the beginning position for the tabletop. From here, you're going to lift one arm in front of the face while the other is still on the ground. Begin to raise up just like the tabletop, but this time support on just one hand. The other hand will begin to reach back behind the head as the eyes follow it. You will push past the neutral spine position and into a full spinal arch while also rotating the shoulders and hips to maximize reach before finally returning back down into the starting position. Be mindful to stabilize the supporting arm and shoulder blade throughout this movement. These bridge variations will build strength and mobility around the spine while teaching the body to integrate its strength and work together. If you try these movements and find that you are already athletic and mobile enough to perform them with ease and you would like to push yourself further, consider trying back bends an extreme test of full body strength and mobility as seen in gymnastics. If enough people comment that it's something they would like to try, I'll do a video on progressing to the back bend soon, as it can be a rather difficult variation to progress to at first. And a more accessible progression for many people I would also recommend is trying a back bridge walk, a great full body control exercise with all the same mobility and integration benefits of the back bridge. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for further notifications. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep moving my friends.